Welcome to this episode of Bonsai On at Kisetsu N, the online bonsai school located here in Europe. Today it is about summer maintenance and especially about pots from Mr. Waga from Hungary who have sent some beautiful pots to a kind of experiment with bonsai to see how they adapt. The approach and philosophy of Mr. Waka is that the bonsai pot itself should not be that toned down or in the background as it maybe is in most cases when we look at the Japanese tradition. In China you will see more expressive pots as well, but we are mainly clinging to the tradition of Japan and that is more humble and more downtoned pots that are not that expressive because we want normally to force the image to be the tree alone and the pot just to be a supplement like the framing on a painting. But if you look at European paintings throughout the years, way back, you will also see some very ornamental framings of large paintings and sometimes they almost takes away the focus on the painting itself. But if you take your time and look closely, it also might work well together. So these pots made from Mr. Vaga that I will present to you, to you today is with that approach that the bonsai pot itself should be a more expressive part of the bonsai display or the bonsai expression. And I think Mr. Vaga have succeeded with some of those pots bringing something extra into the bonsai art. And I am a traditional guy in many senses, but I also like to experiment and see new things. And I think it have been a wonderful experience to try to adapt some of my bonsai to these pots and see how that changes the perspective of the tree and how I approach the bonsai itself. And I still love the Japanese way. I also like the Chinese and there's Taiwan and there's a lot of different kinds of expressions. I'm not one who wants only one type of tree or expression in my bonsai garden. I like that variation and then we can use it for whatever we like at the time and the mood. Like when we are listening to music, sometimes you like rock, sometimes you like pop, sometimes you might like classic or jazz. It also depends on the mood you are in, what you like to set up maybe in the tokonoma. In the Tokonoma today I have put up a presentation of a birch collected nearby, locally digged up from the ground and like Mr. Vaka is trying to make a maybe more loose grip on the pots, I'm trying to make a more natural approach and loose grip on the design of that birch. The slab this birch is placed on is not made but by Mr. Vaka but by myself because I like that slab for a presentation of a naturalistic or natural style of bonsai. And the side is a small sedum in a pot from Tohol Villa from Sweden. And then we have a Japanese scroll at the back. So it's a mixture between Sweden, Denmark and Japan or just Europe and Japan. And when you are exhibiting a tree for a display of any kind of thing, if it is a show, if it is an event or in a homemade tokonoma or just at a table nearby the wall and you're using a scroll, I think it is important to know what the meaning and expression of that scroll is. Here the scroll expresses a summer feeling and the words, the calligraphy on the scroll is telling something with the words like iron because there is a mountain around. It's something that expresses the heart feeling of the mountains, also soil, summer, flowers are present in the words. And if you look closely, there are painted some shrimps and that adds that summer feeling together with some water that gives you that summer cool feeling. And that is what the scroll expresses. And that's why I have used it for this presentation. It could be with another tree as well, a flowering tree or like I have chosen a summer presentation with that lightness of the birch leaves. And I like that expression. It's kind of Nordic or Northern Europe, Scandinavian. You can also just say European because this is a tree that belongs to this area. 
and that gives me that sense and that uh, emotion and feeling about it. And if you look at the base, you have added some ferns and uh, shrubs, flowering shrubs. These still need to mature, fill in, giving that landscape feeling. And that is a perfect display for a summer presentation and will be much more difficult in winter because then the ferns and all the shrubs have withered down and are not expressing that feeling. So this is a clear summer presentation. When we turn our eyes to Mr. Waga's pots, I have here one example with a potentilla still in training. What I will show you here are trees in training. And I have fitted that with a Shohen pot from Mr. Waga with ornaments that looks like leaves and maybe flowers in between. And that fits very well with the potentilla and I like that glaze with a little bit of green and then light blue. Fits very well with the potentilla that will flower with yellow flowers when it is allowed, still in training, and we'll do a little bit of summer pruning here, summer maintenance. Summer care and pruning is a way of keeping the tree healthy growing and looking forward to the next step with the tree. It has developed very well. It was just put in this pot last year and trained one year before that and it already have a nice density and crown. And every time I cut here, I remove a flower bud if it is on its way to be developed. But I'm caring more about the silhouette of the tree at this time. So I cut out what is extending that silhouette and I notice a leaf growing in that direction towards you. And that I keep, if I cut a little lower, I will have a leaf going backwards, but I want it in this direction. This kind of directional pruning is really important when we are beginning to look into secondary and tertiary branching. Improve your skills, improve your bonsai with a Bonsai On membership. Weekly tutorials with caretaking techniques and inspiration from the Kisetsu N Bonsai Garden. Join the Kisetsu N learning experience with international Shohen Bonsai expert Morten Albeck. With a Bonsai On membership you get immediate access to the growing library with hours of tutorials for beginners and experts. Also join the members live Q&A every month where you will experience the friendly spirit of Kisetsu N. Everything going out of the shape or crossing upwards here and I want to keep that depth and a little space in between so I can imagine a bird flying in here and sit on a branch. Then next year we may look into some flowering but first of all this is about cleaning a little up. Any crossing branches that will be disturbing will be removed and any small dead twigs or something just growing upwards and in between will be removed. Also try to strive for uneven lengths in between here in space so we get that natural feeling. Not a big job to do, but important. And for small show in here, it will only take a few minutes and the job is done. But also we have to repeat it over and over again during the summer because this is a fast growing spitzy. That's it for now. Another thing we can do today is cleaning up the deadwood a bit. You can see it begins to turn a little green because it is watered and have been moist. Therefore you will get a little of that green algae clinging to the deadwood here and that will break it down. So I brush it off with a hard steel brush. 
to get it down to the base and after that we can add some lime sulfur again both to bleach the wood but especially to preserve it from rotting and potentillas have this really hard wood but it doesn't withstand rotting very well it's which can fool you when it is so hard and stiff to work with. Then once you think it would be withstanding rotting very well, but it doesn't, quite the opposite. So it's also about keeping it from being too moist for too long time. And then I use a nylon brush to smoothen this out. And here you see the live vein curling in between here and out at the other side, keeping that part alive. Let's put it up in the side display at the tokonoma so we can get a better view of it. The idea with the side tokonoma here is to display smaller trees and show him or middle-sized bonsai divided with a wall so the bigger bonsai can be displayed at the main part of the tokonoma. <laughs> Next to the tokonoma, I have a crab apple that needs a little cleaning up. That is the perfect time of the year to walk around your garden, your bonsai garden, checking your trees. Not a lot is happening. The first spring growth, the strong growth is stopped. And now we're going into the middle season of the summer soon, and it will be a weaker or not so strong growth as in the spring. This is a crab apple also placed in a waka pot with that different expression, fitting this tree very well. It had some difficulties. The middle of the tree died and have turned it around. So we see actually the back now being the front and I need to clean up the branches a little. And then I have a nice presentation in a different type of pot that fits this style of the tree because it has that a little bit more natural expression and not so uh, classic Japanese with those strict forms of the foliage path. Therefore, I think this pot brings out better the natural styling of this tree. Of course, you will notice some tangled branches in between, but this is not the time to begin to wire them. It's only time to prune. But I also want to strengthen up the tree further, therefore I do nothing more than just a little cleaning up. And the dead twigs are removed. Here I have a branch growing directly upwards and I will remove that. Doesn't look natural. Instead, we use lateral branches or branches growing slightly upwards but never growing directly upwards or directly downwards because that 
doesn't look very natural on a bonsai. And then there are those dead leaves, often at the base where they have been outgrown from the new leaves being stronger and shading them away they for no use so we just clean that up so we avoid any fungus that attacks from that. Somewhere you can use your fingers or place I need a pair of tweezers to get in between. And the dead twigs are removed. Then in autumn when the leaves drop, we can begin to wire because then the branches are no longer brittle. It will also be easier to see what you're doing when they are leafless. But so far, this will probably be the new front or we will have two fronts in future, depending on how it develops. And here comes another Vaga pot with a different arrangements, a forced feeling. This was put together this spring and still needs to mature a lot, but will not be like the classic forest bonsai you see because it has to adapt to the pot. Therefore, I selected trees with odd curves and bends in between. I have to work still on this to fit the shape of the pot to give that, that natural and a little bit more artistic and different feeling. This episode I will take a new direction with my normal approach to how I style a bonsai or how I start a bonsai because the usual thing to do is to take a nice tree, a nice material, begin to train it and then later find a pot that suits the tree. Today we will turn things around. Sometimes it makes sense to have the pot and then decide for the tree but of course that uh, demands that you have a tree that will fit that pot or that you make trees to fit that pot. And in this case today, I will take advantage of those special pots from Keramika Waga with an organic form. As you can see here, they are not like the typical bonsai pot and that makes it demanding to use but also and challenging but also very satisfying if it succeeds. So for this purpose, I have Take, take my offspring from the pot instead of from the tree and found some trees that I have been growing in the garden for a few years. You can see here some Acer Campestra field maples uh, dug up from the ground. I have uh, been growing them in the ground for between two to five years. The biggest ones a little longer and then I will arrange a forest in this pot that will fit with the shape and that is the opposite way around of what we are normally doing where we have a tree and then we manage a pot that will fit in. But sometimes, and I know we all do that, we buy pots, we get pots, and then we have nothing to fit in them. But here, especially with a special pot, I'll try to manage to make a different kind of a forest planting where the pot is as much as part of the design as the trees themselves. There are some very nice ornaments showing flowers and leaves and uh, this green and bluish color will fit the Asa compressor the field maple very well. So now it's just how we arrange it in such a bowl so it looks good. First I will prepare the pot and then we take a look at the trees we have at hand. I chose the Acer compressor for this uh, kind of experiment with a forest in that part simply because the leaves have that uh, 
nice soft form that will go way well with this type of part. Same goes with the trunk color that also fits very well with the a little bit darker part. And then again, the feel maybe is very forgiving. It is easy to arrange. It will react very well on hard pruning also with the roots. Therefore, it's a perfect piece to use for this small kind of a forest planting here. This morning here in, at the Kjetsetern garden and I prepared those trees yesterday, putting them with the soil in a plastic pot, watered well, so they had dragged all, all the water they need before we begin to transplant them. If you find this pot too difficult to use for your needs, you can of course do the exact same thing with a classical flat pot with some bird dirt on it, could be washed off easily. But that is a, the traditional way to use a flat piece for a forest. This will demand more trees and a different design than this part. So you can use this as an offspring, how to make a forest, and you can tr transform that into your own style if you like. So as always, this is for your inspiration, not how you should do it necessarily. You can just use this for your imagination and transform it into your taste. But here is my go on it. First, I will prepare the pot, add a net in the bottom so the soil will not flush out of the drainage zone. Because it is a forest, it is necessary to add a good deal of anchoring wires so there is enough to keep everything in place. So I put several of these through the holes and up here so we can anchor the trees securely. And anchoring trees in a pot can never be exaggerated. It's very important they are rock solid. So the roots, the fine feathery roots that takes up nutrients or water are not disturbed absolutely more than necessary. After adding all that wire, I have prepared something we also need, and that is the classic Kato uh, soil to easier arrange the trees. Using that mixture of clay and uh, sparknum, that will help arrange the trees more easily and the roots will easily grow into that. We'll come back to that when we start adding the trees. First, let us add some soil to this pot. I have prepared a blend of soil, and uh, this is my favorite mix for deciduous trees. Partly pumice, soft academia, and a little bit of the smaller and harder academia. I find that works very well. You can add a little of little organic soil as well, some uh, sparknum peat moss soil, if you prefer that to keep the moisture up. But for the ASO compressor, that is not necessary. This mixture has shown to be very good. I'll start adding a little bit of a coarser layer at the bottom. Then I will have a medium fine mixture in the middle up to the top. And then I will add a fine grain top layer to keep the moisture a little better. And we will finish off adding some mosses to keep it all moist to avoid the soil from transpiring too fast here in the first stages of the life of these trees where we need the roots to develop very well. Then later we can remove the moss during the growing season and just add it when we need it for a show or something else. The first layer is a little bit more coarse to secure. It is well draining. I will not put any kind of gravel stones or something like that, because if you do that, you will risk some water blocking down below because of the water tension closing the bottom. So it's important that there is some soil down there that will drag the water down. 
Then I add the next layer with the growing medium. You can see a mixture of more academa and a mixture of larger pieces of academa and the finer grained academa. And we have a very deep pot here. I'll just fill it up. And then let's look at the trees. Let's get back to the trees, what it's all about. When you are planning to do a forest, it is important to have different sizes, different thicknesses, different ages of trees. You can, as I have done, collect some trees, grow them in the ground or in pots or in boxes for some time, and then begin to select when you want to arrange your forest planet some years ahead, or you can go into a garden nursery center and buy some bundles for hedges. Maybe there you will also find that some are small and some are larger, and then you mix it when you plant your forest. So you have that diversity, so we can make a natural appearance of a forest and not a production forest where everything is planted at the same time. We want it to look as something that nature has done itself, and of course it will not look like that in nature because we add that in this case, more artistic part to make a piece of art or craft, whatever you would like to call it. Here is the main tree I have selected for this arrangement, the thickest trunk here, and we'll start taking that up. But before I do that, just mention that it's important we do it at, uh, in the morning uh, in the shadow so it is still cool at the roots do not dry out too fast. You can put them in a bucket of water in between when you work them. Oh, and you can use a duster to mist them so they do not dry out. That is important. This is an old scissor I use for the rough work where soil is uh, in play, so to speak. So I do not ruin my fine scissors that are used to cut branches or leaves and then a concave cutter for thicker roots. So when we examine this piece, you'll see it has some roots up here because I have planted them a little bit deep in the ground when I collected them to be sure they will grow well. And here we have a nice distribution of roots and we are not planting this in a very shallow pot but I will still remove the bottom two thick roots from not that many feathery roots, so we can easily arrange the piece. As you can see, this is too large, but what I can use is this movement in the trunk and then some straight growth. And I will shorten some of this, and this is just a preliminary pruning. We will do much more of this when we develop the tree later. But I sh cut it short because in a forest you will not have that white branching at the sides. If it was a flat part, you need to take in. If it was a flat part, you have to have in mind that you need a flat root base and maybe train the trees better before this type of work so you're sure you have that flat root base when you begin to work at them. The Acer compressor anyway is very forgiving and will set new roots quite easily. The moment comes where we have to arrange the trees. I always start with the largest tree first. I have not adapted the trees exactly to the dimension that I want at the end. I will start arranging them and then we can cut a little back later. And of course, this is just the start. We have to develop those trees over time. So from the basket with some wet roots, I will place the main tree and I have chosen this side of the pot as the front because there is some nice movement here, adding something to this. So I place it a little off center with some movement here. To the right, I will fix it just temporarily 
with the wires, not very tough, just so that I can control it and rearrange it if I need that. Something like this. And now the Keto comes in handy. This black substance, if we add that to the top layer of soil where I add the next trees, that will help supporting them and the roots will easily grow through this. It will just be a helper here in the start of the process. And you can mix that up with some more Akadama as well if you want it to be more fluid. I just add that and when I work with the trees it will be mixed in. Next tree I will place as close as possible to that first tree and help it have some movement away from it. So we have a little bit of same natural appearance as we would have in a forest where we have those lines moving away. Using Keto to fix it a little and a wire. Smaller trees I add to the front to give that sense of depth. And here we have a little bit of odd tree fitting with this shape. In between I add a little soil to support the structure here. And the roots. And then, before anything dries out, it's important to add that layer of soil. Comb it in between the roots and into the keto soil here, helping keeping the trees in place gently using my fingers to feel how the soil goes in and never pressure it with your fingers because then you will both squeeze the roots and make a very compact soil where the roots will not thrive. Where I have some top roots emerging from the soil I add a little moss to keep that moist and in place so they do not dry out. You can use dried sparkle moss as well, you use for air layering and buy that in a bonsai shop near you. It makes a final touch too, but here it's all about securing the health of the tree and nothing else. Thank you.
the tree are arranged. I have watered the soil, added that top dressing just to keep it with a nice surface and a little bit more moisture than having a more open soil structure at the top. Therefore, I've added that fine layer of academia and then adding some mosses where roots are exposed. That's it for now, but next thing I will do is make a slight trimming of some of these trees, reposition some that have been disturbed a little, adding more wire if necessary. You can put wire between trees to support each other if necessary. A slight pruning before we end, and then a final word about tree arrangement in a forest. When arranging a forest, it is important that we do not have branches growing in the middle in the center of the composition, at least not at the lower part, simply because if you imagine a natural forest, those branches wouldn't be there, they would be shaded out. Also to help the movement of this composition, I want some of the branches growing outwards and therefore I remove some of them growing too straight upwards at the edges of the part, so we get that movement outside. That will be a limited pruning here because I also need new growth to appear and then train the tree during the seasons to come. But what is important as well is to get that uh, foliage to develop, add some photosynthesis and energy and put that down to the root. Therefore it will probably be the only pruning this season to get this thing started. And you might notice it's a bit late at the season I do this work, but that is what we can manage sometimes. And as I said before, Acer Compressor is pretty forgiving. I try to do this a little on orthodox so it isn't that neat as you will normally see when you're doing a forest. Try to arrange it a bit more loose so we get that interesting piece here and not what we normally do as an inspiration. When we arrange the forest, it's important that the thickest trunk is the highest tree in the composition. The second thickest trunk should be the second highest tree in the composition and so on. Therefore, I need to shorten this one down because at the moment it is the highest and I want this one to be the top. So I find a place where I have a piece of new growth growing outside. And I have too many branches conflicting here, so I cut that off and have a branch going to the back. Then I have kind of a sort weird thing here, breaking the rules, so to speak, but I will let it stay for, for now and then later we can see if that will work. And this will be almost the pruning for now. And then better to wait and do the next styling next year when the tree has gained strength. The good thing about this composition, comparing with a forest in a flat pot, is that this will grow much stronger because most trees actually like to have deep pots so the roots can develop. But for aesthetically reasons, we put them in flat pots in between, and that is a challenge to keep healthy. So this will be much more easy, and compressors do like deep pots when they can get it. So this one will try very well. In this composition, there are 11 trunks. There actually is 13 if you count in small root growth coming up here. I will let them be, let them stay for the moment and then let's see what happens. But an uneven number is much easier to arrange than an even number. But there are, and I have to repeat that all over, uh, over and over again, there are no rules about exact numbers in a forest style. Then, and uh, the number 13 will be an unlocking number, but I don't care. If it looks good, it looks good, and you could do it with two or three or four trees if it works, but it's much easier to arrange trees with an uneven number and make that natural feeling. As you can see, 
the thickest chunk a little off center, and we have the second thickest tree, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and then it begins to uh, matter less how thick they are. But I have some thin trunks in between to make interest, and at the outside, making this center tree look stronger, and also being the biggest tree in the composition. I do think this made an interesting composition, like it or not, because it is special, it is different, and I like to add that to my collection between traditional Japanese style bonsai, also have something modern and maybe European or Western, I don't know what it is, it is just uh, something different and the pot was what made me to do this composition and not the other way around. I had the trees but usually they would be placed in a traditional pot but here the pot pushed me towards doing something else and I think this will be very elegant. It is important, it is not pruned with very precise, a very precise and neat structure and foliage pad. It has to have this a little odd and a little loose shape to work with this pot. That is really important, exactly as if you did a painting or a brush stroke. If you have very straight lines, continue with that, both in the pot and in the tree. So if you have a curved natural shaped pot like this one, then also make the trees follow that movement and that impression, that expression. That is the most important lesson in this episode, I think. And then we just have to wait and see how this develops over the years. The aftercare is beginning feeding right away because the temperatures are up, up uh, above the 15 degrees, the 60 Fahrenheit in a few days, and it will begin to take up nutrients and there are no reason to wait. There's an old saying that uh, adding nutrients at newly transplanted trees will burn the roots, but that is not true. They are immediately able to take up water and nutrients if they are just treated well. I will though place it in the shadow the first two weeks so that it uh, can recover from the shock of being transplanted. Interesting to see how that will develop and how it will be received. At least it will be a piece in my garden to enjoy and I really look forward to develop that branch structure and think different when I style and prune it. What I will do today is I will just prune it a little because it was planted this spring and just needs a few adjustments and that's how we approach bonsai, doing not a lot at one time if we can avoid it because this is not a demonstration where we have to change everything rapidly. This is continuing improvements little by little, especially with the city streets we need to go forward very slowly. It is time consuming, it takes years to develop a very good and dense ramification with well balanced and placed secondary and tertiary branching. Again, like you see in the background, the birds, this will not be a classic bonsai with a lot of foliage pads very neatly arranged. It will be a more loose expression because that's what the pot invites me to do. And I follow that. So for once I take my offspring in the design in the pot and not the tree itself. Everything was cut in spring and after that, a good flush of growth has come out and it's time to make a little adjustment. I still want the top to grow in this direction because the full movement of this forest goes to the right. Therefore, I will not do anything else than give it a better angle here. Being less visible and tapering a bit and then prune back the top over here keeping just the necessary to make not a round canopy because I want that still natural look, but to spread it out a little, give it a better expression. Keeping branches at the back to keep movement and wiring will be done again in autumn because it's too early to do it now. It, the tree is full of water and the branches will too, be too brittle, but I want that soft movement throughout the tree so I have if I have any straight branches and not in the right position, I will bend them in position in autumn. But now I will just cut to add movement and secure some back budding, diverting the energy and thin out a little. A little lower at the trunk, we have a problem with a branch growing inside 
where the natural is, and a forest will be shadow, and it sits opposite a thicker branch at the back that I need to correct a little, but I will remove that one so we get an open space and a more natural looking forest where nothing will grow zigzagging in here in the middle because that would be shaded out naturally in nature. And I try always to think about how light will reach inner areas and what open spaces this will cause. Already you get a better flow and idea of the direction of the trunks. Some of these will have to be bent in position later. Again, we have some opposite branches. I have to choose one of them to go. This time I select this one because I have a tree filling in here and I want a gap in between the trunks. This one instead can be used for the back side to fill in here and at that depth. And when I cut, I always think about directional cuts. So I cut just above a leaf that I keep to grow in the direction of the leaf points because that is the way it will go. As you can see, there is a small stone in here. This is placed to keep the trunks a little apart. There are a few crossing branches here, but I like that because that adds that natural feeling to this composition, different from what you will normally do with the forest in a more shallow or, or flat part with less depth, but here that pots in white to that movement and it gives it a special feeling for me at least. Field maples are really good for forest planting. They have the ability to sprout out well with new foliage as soon as they are cut. They are a little like the trident maple, the Japanese Acer Bulgarianum. The leaves are slightly bigger and the uh, shape of the foliage is a little bit more round where the foliage of the Japanese trident maple is a little more narrow and a, a little bit more sharp. But this is a great material for bonsai, especially for false planting. I can only recommend that. Feeding is also important to encourage the new growth on a tree recently established as a bonsai. These were collected earlier this season and already they are settled and begins to set new growth. So I expect in three or four seasons, I will have a more mature example of that forest. And again, this pot invites to a more coarse and not that dense ramification and a more light feeling because that is what the pot indicates. And I think the two of them will blend well together. I'm keeping this tree in semi-shade during the middle of the day, dappled shade, to not burn off the leaf because it is so recently established. And now for a quite different pot. This pot really challenged me to see the beauty in it. I could see the beauty, of course, because I like that type of pot, but what on earth could I fit into it? And the choice went to this Puricanta, and I think it underlines the movement of the tree really good. That powerful glazed part adds that movement to the tree, and therefore those two branches that I left to elongate 
will fit the design very well in future. They will also flower at the moment. There's wire on and I am looking almost daily, checking if it is not beginning to bite in because the pericanta is a strong grower, especially this season where we have this uh, fine weather. Everything is growing very strongly. The, it's okay that the wire bites in just slightly because that will make a scarring underneath the bark at the tissue and that will strengthen everything up so it stays in place. But if it bites into much, the scarring will be impossible to heal over. Maybe not a pericanthus, but that means I have to grow them even more to heal up and fatten up to cover that area. But for now it's fine and I think the glazed pot and that movement works well with a semi-cascade tree. I had to change the idea of the tree to fit it in the pot. Originally those two branches were only there to be shorter at a later time, cut back and heal up a scar at the inside. But now I have changed that to let them be like a cascade style of the tree, giving that elegant movement and that will all fit very well with this kind of pot. Using different then the classic bonsai pots, of course, demands that you open your mind and have an artistic approach when you look at it. And of course, some of this is also taste. Some will like it, some will not, and that's it. But for me, this gives this tree a really different feeling than it would if it was just placed in a traditional pot. Let's finish the Vaca pot series here with another pot fitting a Cotona Aster. Again, it was challenging to find a tree that will actually fit this form, but my choice for a tree going into this Vaca pot is a Cotona Aster that has a difficult trunk with multiple small trunks growing together and aired roots in between. And that piece I think fit very well. It's still in the development stage. It's too much like a hat at the mo moment. So I am building up the canopy. It will be higher and it will be wider. And uh, there's only one way to go with this and that is simply pruning. Only very few branches in the future will be wired because pruning gives that zigzag pattern and a more natural movement where if you wire every branch in position and give the movement that have that soft movement and you will rarely see that in nature. So wiring is mainly to set the main branches and partly the secondary branches and then you build up from the secondary branches partly and then the tertiary branches by simply cutting because that gives you that natural flexible movement with sharp edges instead of a unnatural soft man-made shape and that is time consuming and will take years to achieve and this is still in the beginning i have this tree for now maybe eight or nine years and in still in in the development mode first i had to build up all the branching and now i begin to work on the secondary and tertiary branching elongating some putting space in between but still only by cutting a little bit more spacing is added in here and I'll still keep cutting this back although I told you I want to elongate it but if I just let it grow it will not get that zigzag pattern it's all about letting it grow a little cut back and add length a little by little when new growth appears This was a small piece about summer care and vaca pots. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Improve your skills, improve your bonsai with a Bonsai On membership. Weekly tutorials with caretaking techniques and inspiration from the Kisetsu In Bonsai Garden. Join the Kisetsu In learning experience with international Shohen Bonsai expert Morten Albeck. With a Bonsai On membership you get immediate access to the growing library with hours of tutorials. 
for beginners and experts. Also join the members live Q&A every month where you will experience the friendly spirit of Kisetsuan.